Today I review Dr. Mike's 30 day vegan challenge video. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's good to see you again. If we haven't met before then, hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm a qualified nutritionist and soon to be PhD student. I make vegan health and nutrition videos as often as I can. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below. Alternatively, send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. Also, just a quick reminder that I'm now providing consults, organic acids, stool tests and SIBO tests via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell to the video. A vegan diet can be a very healthy diet, whether you're young, old, somewhere in between, pregnant, non-pregnant, breastfeeding, not breastfeeding. Basically, it's applicable to all life stages. The reason I put that word can in there, you can follow a vegan diet, eat vegan burgers with sugary sodas, with gummy candies, still be vegan, and that's not really healthy, right? So I think that Mike hit the nail on the head here. We all know that most health organizations around the world acknowledge that the vegan diet is healthy for all stages of life. I also like the fact that Mike acknowledges that while vegan junk foods are vegan, they shouldn't be consumed regularly on a healthy plant-based diet. Too many people with biases will bash the vegan diet because of these junk foods and then label the vegan diet unhealthy. So it's nice to see early on in the video that Mike has left his prejudices at the door. Whether this holds true for the remainder of the video, only time will tell. And I have to say, it's not the only healthy diet out there. Some of the loudest voices in the vegan community are quick to say that veganism is the only healthy option. That's not the case. There are several other healthy diets out there. For example, the Mediterranean diet that I'm personally a fan of that are just as healthy, if not healthier than the vegan diet. So what I would say to Mike on his comment here is that the Mediterranean diet has never really been studied or looked at in terms of its impacts on reducing non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases are primarily heart, lung diseases, cancers, and also diabetes, and they are the world's largest killers with an estimated 38 million deaths annually. And of these deaths, 60 million are premature under 70 years of age. So non-communicable diseases are diseases where we can reduce our risk factors by following healthy diets and also lifestyles. Now, despite what many nutritionists, doctors, and dietitians tell you about the Mediterranean diet, reducing rates of non-communicable diseases, there is little evidence to substantiate these claims. Even the World Health Organization in its 2018 Health Evidence Network Synthesis Report, it said this about the effectiveness of the Mediterranean diet in reducing non-communicable diseases. Examples of research into the impact of Mediterranean diet and Nordic diet policies on non-communicable diseases were found for only three countries, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. The four studies included in this review assessed the impact of national Mediterranean diet and Nordic diet-based guidelines, recommendations and pyramids on non-communicable diseases. So what the WHO is saying is that from its literature review carried out in 2016 of over 4,011 journal articles and 789 conference papers, only four studies assessed the impact of national Mediterranean diets or Nordic diet-based guidelines, recommendations or pyramids on non-communicable diseases. These studies were based on observational studies and food diaries. So while these studies did show small improvements in health outcomes, Dr. Mike has no grounds to suggest that the Mediterranean diet is any more effective at reducing rates of non-communicable diseases compared to vegan diets, because quite frankly, there is little evidence to support this. And in fact, the WHO suggests that the Mediterranean diet is gone and dead because of changes in lifestyles in countries like Greece, Spain, and Italy. So quite frankly, Mike can have no long-term large-scale studies to support his claims because even the WHO suggests that evidence is limited despite it regularly pushing the diet routinely and widely. So what we do know is that the Mediterranean diet is a primarily plant-based eating plan that includes a daily intake of whole grains, olive oil, fruits, vegetables, beans, and other legumes, nuts, herbs, and spices. Other foods like animal proteins are eaten in smaller quantities, with the preferred animal protein being fish and seafood. According to the evidence criteria of the World Health Organization and Food and Agricultural Organization, cancer risk reduction was associated with a high intake of fruits and vegetables 
vegetables and was assessed as probable or possible and the risk of CVD reduction was assessed as convincing whereas lower risk of osteoporosis was assessed as probable. The evidence for a risk reducing effect of consuming whole grains was assessed as possible for colorectal cancer and probable for type 2 diabetes and for CVD. The evidence for a risk reducing effect of consuming nuts was assessed as probable for CVD. So what is probably more likely is that the Mediterranean diet is propped up by high amounts of fruits and vegetables with small amounts of fish, meats and eggs and the health benefits are therefore coming from the plant based foods where there is an overwhelming body of evidence. I have to be honest and admit that I don't generally recommend veganism as my first option. I do know that it's a restrictive diet and we know restrictive diets have high failure rates. Plus the benefits of a vegan diet aren't that much better than some of the other alternatives that are simpler to follow. When I recommend a diet, I'm trying to create the healthiest diet, but also one that's feasible and achievable for my patients to face without disrupting their lives. On the other hand, if one of my patients comes in and wants to follow a vegan diet, I'm totally in support of that. I just have to make sure that they're adequately planning their meals, they're supplementing when need be, checking their blood tests, and ideally having some guidance either from myself or a nutritionist. I would agree with everything that Mike said there. While it is his opinion to not recommend vegan diets to his patients, he doesn't try and dissuade patients who want to follow a vegan diet. And this is a fair and just approach for any doctor, nutritionist or dietitian to take. I would also agree with Mike that long-term adherence to dietary approaches is key to improving health outcomes. The vegan diet often falters in this area because few nutritionists, dietitians and doctors have experiences in recommending healthy and fun plant-based vegan diets but things are changing in these areas. The research behind health benefits of following a vegan diet are substantial and high quality. If you're following the standard American diet and then switch over to a vegan diet, you're gonna see improvement in chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, strokes, even an extension of life in some cases. And what's most interesting is when we add some animal products into the mix, those outcomes still hold true. That's why what I recommend to my patients is a plant-focused diet, meaning that they should get the majority of their calories from plants, fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds, healthy fats, and a moderate amount of poultry and fish with a minimal amount of red meat. In fact, that's the diet I follow and recommend to my own family. The field of nutrition research is ever changing and as we get more information, more quality studies, we doctors and nutritionists alike are going to be able to give better recommendations when it comes to a vegan diet, a plant-focused diet. All of this is susceptible to change, but it's important that we make the best decisions with the knowledge that we have on hand. The one thing that I can say with 100% certainty is there's no such thing as a miracle diet for everybody. I would agree with all of that from a nutritional perspective and while I am vegan and I would rather that people did consume animal products. I think that most vegans would agree that if the world went 90% plant-based then this is better for the animals than a 1% rise in veganism every few years. And I agree with what Mike is saying about small amounts of animal products in the diet. If you look at the research, if you consume less than 10% of your calories from animal products, it doesn't appear to cause adverse health outcomes in too many people. And the main thing that I absolutely agree with Mike on is that there is no such thing as a miracle diet. On day one, I was excited. I was like, if I could tackle keto, I can definitely do vegan. So when all the stuff from Thrive came in, I was unboxing, I was popping out the food, it looked delicious. The first point at which I had a little bit of hesitation was when I ordered my first at-home delivery. Buffalo cauliflower bites with some kind of not real mayo. And this is a wrap with vegan cheese and unchicken. What is unchicken? I was having second thoughts and that's not like me. If I set a goal for myself, I'm going to do everything in my power to meet that goal. But for some reason, when sticking to this vegan diet, I was concerned about so many things. The following week, I was leaving to MIT for the leadership conference. I was worried if they're going to have vegan options available for me. I was then traveling to Miami for a few days. All these worries started bubbling in my head and I was really wondering, 
can I stick to vegan this entire month? Why, why should I do vegan? Because it's more healthier for you, bro. You think so? Yeah, yes. But 30 days is a long time. You just do it! I find it quite interesting at the start of the video, Mike condone vegan junk foods and processed foods and then proceeds to live off fake meats and cheeses for a month. Now, maybe this is a bit pedantic on my part and I'm sure he was eating whole plant-based foods as well. I would also add that the last five years has seen an explosion in veganism, so it's easier than ever before to eat healthy on a vegan diet even when leading a busy life. One of the first obstacles I ran into on the vegan diet was under eating calories. Now I'm partially to blame here because I didn't prep well. And even at the opening of this video, I said the healthy way to follow a vegan diet is to adequately plan your meals. For the first two weeks, I have to be honest, I didn't have much of an appetite. I'm not a huge fan of just eating vegetables and rice and beans. So I didn't have tremendous portions. And because of that, I was calorie deficient. I actually noticed some weight loss. What helped me tremendously to make up this calorie deficit is eating some of these snacks that Thrive sent over. If I didn't have these snacks, I'd be under eating calories the majority of the time. Long days in the hospital, but I got my simple meals. These crackers get me through some rough, rough days. So I like the fact that Mike shoulders some of the responsibility for not getting sufficient calories. Again, rather than planning out his meals and snacks more efficiently, he resorted to snacks and processed refined foods that many new vegans also resort to. But it really doesn't have to be this way. There are many healthy quick snacks and meal ideas. So I would simply say to new vegans, avoid a diet in too many processed refined foods and go onto social media for your inspiration. The biggest problems I ran into, and this is really embarrassing to say on camera. The whole plane ride, I'm sitting next to a doctor, and my stomach is going, blah, 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 blah. I had to ask him to stand up like three, four times. From day one up until the last day of the diet, I was having tremendous gas and bloating. It's so embarrassing to say. I mean, think about this. I fly on planes. I interact with patients for long periods of time. I sit in conferences. I can't just be sitting there. Flatulent. I did try and isolate some ingredients to see which ones were causing this gas and bloating combination for me, but I couldn't find out what it was. I normally eat brown rice. I normally eat vegetables and fruits and beans. I expect them to go away after four weeks, but no, they stuck around. I would have to say that the vegan diet probably won't work for me long term. I just can't sit there with my stomach going blah, 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 and me wanting to pass gas the entire time. God, that's a this is a typical problem for many new vegans and I talk about it a lot on my channel. A good analogy is that if you wanted to run a marathon, you wouldn't just run a marathon, you would train for it first. And it's the same principle with your guts. You have to train up your gut and build up your microbiome. So you need to spend a couple of months building up to more and more plant-based foods so that your guts can adjust adequately. Some good little tips are two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before every meal, some digestive enzymes and also some fermented foods every day. The apple cider vinegar and digestive enzymes will help break down your food more efficiently and the sauerkraut will put lots of beneficial bacteria into your gut. And all of this will help reduce the gas and bloating that you are suffering with. But just remember it's simply an adjustment period and as soon as you fix the problem that you can get rid of the apple cider vinegar and digestive enzymes as quickly as possible. And in terms of the fermented foods I would always keep them in your diet to help maintain a healthy microbiome. What I didn't know about veganism is that there are a ton of up and coming options for those who aren't used to eating vegan. There are specialty restaurants that just offer vegan foods with no animal products that remind you of foods that you may have eaten when you ate animal products. And I thought that was really cool. On top of that, a lot of these restaurants and even some of the products I got from Thrive tasted delicious because of the sauces. Vegan sauces are on point. I'm loving these blue chips, but without some like sauce, like I'm really digging this Primal Kitchen classic barbecue sauce, these chips just aren't cutting it. Again, restaurants and processed foods are okay occasionally, but you don't want to make them your staples. So for new vegans, you have to learn to cook and make your meals and sauces from scratch. Otherwise you will fall into the processed trap and you won't get the true health benefits from the diet. I've talked about on this channel 
uh, of decision fatigue. Because you're constantly making decisions and you're using your willpower, it's actually a finite resource. What I noticed while I was following the vegan diet was that I lost the, the drive to go to the gym. My work ethic actually suffered because I was putting such a strong emphasis on sticking to vegan when there were so many temptations and there were things I wanted to eat. I didn't wanna hop on my spin bike in my bedroom. I didn't wanna to go to the gym with my friends. This is really unlike me and it's an obstacle I didn't actually expect to face. When I went to the gym, I lifted fine. Getting to the gym was the actual struggle. I think as Mike alluded to at the start of the plan, he wasn't getting sufficient calories and coupled with that, he was probably eating a fair amount of processed refined foods. Now, if you do this at the expense of whole foods, then there is a strong chance that your cognition will probably be affected and especially when you are trying veganism for the first time. At the time I least expected it, disaster struck. I got sick. <coughs> I started coughing. I got a sore throat. I got a low grade fever. I went to see the doctor. I weighed the pros and cons of starting antibiotics, of stopping the vegan diet. I decided to stick with conservative treatment and treat it like a viral illness. One of my favorite hacks to treat viral illnesses, actually the symptoms of the viral illnesses, is green tea with Manuka honey. Patrol members be advised. Three vegan police! Vegan police! Apparently honey is not vegan. What? I guess honey is an animal product, but man, I didn't force the bees to make the honey. They make it on their own. We didn't have to milk them for it. Wait, if you want to disqualify my four week vegan challenge because I ate honey, so be it. I'm more concerned that someone with a doctorate believes that honey has any healing properties for sore throats and bacterial or viral infections. Sorry, again, being pedantic, let's move on. I gotta say, at this point, I was rolling. I was starting getting into the vegan vibe. I was trying out new restaurants. I was sampling all the delicious foods that I got from Thrive, and I was excited. I was getting close to the finish line. But I will say one of the hardest things with the vegan diet is peer pressure. I mean, when I went out to eat with my friends, they were annoyed, to say the least, that we had to choose the restaurant based on my eating preferences. I did do a decent job at trying to pick out vegan options in not so vegan places. Look at this dedication. Greek salad, no feta, asparagus, fries, while I got this next to me, while Keith is eating this, and Jack is eating that. What are you eating? The vegan struggle's real. I wonder how much Thrive are paying him. Yes, again, sorry, being pedantic, but yes, I agree with him. Going out with non-vegan friends at times can be painful, but again, it just comes down to adequate planning. Honestly, I was really proud of myself, and it's nice every now and then to take a challenge like this and learn something new about yourself. In fact, I wanna tell you five things that I learned not only about the vegan diet, but also about myself during this process. One, when I didn't plan well, I ate very unhealthy. When I was at MIT for breakfast, I ate cinnamon toast crunch with almond milk and a banana every morning. That's not healthy, even though it's vegan. Two, I didn't notice a major change in my energy level like I thought I would. I mean, maybe I had a slightly decreased energy level, but we have to remember that I was sick. In the beginning, I was under eating calories, so I don't feel it's fair to blame vegan for that. Three, surprisingly, I didn't get weaker on vegan. I was lifting strong and I felt good, but what did suffer was getting to the gym. I really noticed a lack of willpower when I was following this restrictive diet. Four, when it comes to my body, I lost three pounds. I dropped from 203 to 200 pounds, so there was some weight loss, probably from under eating calories. But despite losing weight, I didn't feel as lean. I mean, all those sauces, all the rice that I ate, pasta, that contributed to the carb load and probably made me feel a little bit pudgier than usual. Five, this is the big one. The real difficulty was my GI system. I mean, it was a mess. The amount of gas and flatulence and bloating, God, I can't, like gross even talking about, but it was really bad. If you have that with any diet, there's no way you're sticking with it. And I tried taking some over-the-counter supplements for this. It did absolutely nothing. So I think I've covered most of this off. If you stray into processed refined foods, then your energy and fatigue levels can be impacted. Also, you have to ease your gut into a vegan diet over a couple of months. Otherwise, some can run into unbearable gas and bloating issues. 
you're curious or interested in starting a vegan diet, I don't wanna dissuade you. In fact, I wanna encourage you, go talk to a dietitian, nutritionist, physician, someone who's well-versed with vegan diets. That way you could do it the healthy, happy, safe way without hurting yourself in the process. And please, reduce the amount of refined carbs and processed foods that you're eating, because as more research comes out, that's the stuff that causes diseases and shortens your lifespan. As does high amounts of meats and also processed refined meats, I would just say fair play to Mike for giving it a try with an open mind and not bashing the diet and lifestyle based solely on his short impressions. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.